Oh, just some reading, a bit of writing, or sometimes I go for a walk outside. Although I consider myself a fan of classic survival horror, the Casper Crows developed Alyssa escaped me when it initially released in 2021. However, that all changed with the new console port, which is titled Alyssa Developer's Cut. While this update isn't exclusive to the console version, it does guarantee that new players will experience the most modern version of this game. Anyway, how does a classic horror hold up in 2024? Pretty good, actually. Where am I? What is this? I need to get out of here. Alyssa begins with a few campy cutscenes describing stolen blueprints that require the police force to travel from town to town and look for them. Players assume the role of Alyssa, who finds herself in a strange, almost deserted town. While I enjoyed the production of these opening moments, I just thought the game would have been better off setting the foundation with a bit more tension than what's here. In all honesty, after an hour, I had already forgotten why I went to that town in the first place. While searching for clues, she spots a suspect and takes off after him only to be pulled into the ground by monsters. When she awakens, she's wearing a dress inspired by Alice in Wonderland in a strange mansion. It doesn't take long till she encounters something that can kill her, but eventually she starts getting to some answers. The actual narrative of this game gets pretty far out there and ends up becoming a blend of campy classic Resident Evil and maybe even a Quentin Tarantino film in terms of twists and total chaos. This largely has to do with the evolution that Alice goes through across the 8 hour campaign. Whether in her clothes or equipment, her confidence seems to alter following each narrative milestone. The writing here captures what fans love about the survival horror genre and just totally leans into it. Although most of the scenes have audio, I didn't really like the sound direction. While the voice work was excellent for this particular genre, the recordings almost sound too clear. Regardless, I enjoyed the cutscenes and overall twists that left me scratching my head and laughing until the credits rolled. The gameplay of Alyssa mirrors its inspirations by offering players the chance to use tank controls or a modern control scheme. It's a good option to have, but I think tank controls work best in this environment, but they may take some getting used to. Luckily, the developer created a pretty lengthy opening sequence to allow you the chance to practice running in a straight line. The rest of the game is a relatively standard flair for the genre. You solve puzzles, conserve ammo, fight monsters, probably die once or twice, get frustrated because you forgot to save, and maybe start over because you forgot to save at all, find new weapons, become overconfident towards the end of the game, take down everything in sight that once terrified you, and credits. However, that doesn't come without some unique elements of gameplay. For starters, each enemy defeated drops gear currency that is used to purchase items and outfits as well as save the game. Item management isn't too crucial as keys are organized on a ring, but the overall traversal of these menus is more inspired by games like Clock Tower, where you have to cycle through each item instead of seeing everything you have on one grid. Menuing is also necessary for using keys to lock doors and healing, so you'll be seeing this item carousel pretty often. Enemies can be quite challenging as their only clear goal is to chase you down and kill you. There are plenty of early game traps as well that teach you to conserve weapons and how to aim properly but there's also a consistent sense of uneasiness in the game's design that forces you to save as often as you can. I wouldn't say any aspects of this game are unfair though, it almost serves as a crash course into the classic survival horror genre. There are options for difficulty, but I feel like it's the perfect way to introduce new players to the experience that older gamers once had. This is further complemented by the overall PS1 era graphics that only heighten the experience. Outside of gameplay, I feel like the outfits need to be brought up because they are a pretty significant part of the experience. At the shop, you can purchase outfits to make Alice look as cute as possible as she blasts away demons. Sadly, these enemies are a lot faster than zombies, but I still manage to look like a badass during scenes, thanks to the insane level of weapon availability. The developer's cut portion of this game adds several new options such as auto-aim, minigames, and new game plus giving players the best experience possible on console. I should again mention that this update is also available on the Steam release. Still, I feel like this definitive version offers the best experience to play, and the port ran smoothly during my very tense time playing on PS5. Alyssa Developer's Cut on console gives players the chance to experience the classic horror survival genre realized in a modern way. While the systems borrow more from the tense and campy retro releases, its modern approach to options and playfulness provides a brand new way to experience this genre. 
I would easily recommend this to anyone who wants to relive classic survival horror and all the frustrations that came with it. Noisy Pixel is giving Alyssa developer's cut on console an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up for all our future content. Noisy Pixel.